Hello everyone, Dr. Suresh here and in this video we will be talking about HMP shunt or pentose phosphate pathway. HMP shunt is nothing but hexose monose phosphate pathway okay, or pentose phosphate pathway. Why? Because hexose monose phosphate pathway is nothing but hexose means 6 carbon and phosphate. Here the main hexose phosphate in our body that is glucose. So here glucose with phosphate it is glucose phosphate. So where this phosphate is attached to glucose at 6th carbon. Okay. So that's why hexose monose phosphate pathway HMP. H for hexose, M for monose and attachment of phosphate. So hexose monose phosphate pathway and pentose phosphate pathway. Why? Because at the end of HMP there are production of pentose phosphates. Okay. So that means ribose. Pentose means ribose here 5 carbon okay and attached with the phosphate so that's why it is known as pentose phosphate pathway and coming in detail about uh, the pathway so pentose phosphate pathway is alternative route for the oxidation of glucose so the major source or major routes for oxidation of glucose we have seen our previous videos like glycolysis and uh, TCA cycle so this pentose phosphate pathway is alternative route for oxidation of glucose and it is also a pathway for formation of pentose phosphate pathway and at the same time as i mentioned it is also called hexose monose phosphate shunt the significance is like greater in uh, importance like what to say oxidation of glucose production of pentose phosphates and also production of nadph so these are all the benefits of these hmp shunt or pentose phosphate pathway so coming to the characteristics of pentose phosphate pathway it is a multicyclic process and it doesn't generate any atp as i mentioned because of the oxidation of glucose will be getting like glycolysis and TCA cycle will be getting uh, ATPs. But here this pathway is mainly concerned for production of pentose phosphates that means pentoses. Okay for pentose formation this pathway is mainly concerned not for ATP production. And three molecules of glucose 6 phosphate to give rise to three molecules of CO2 and three molecules of 5 carbon sugars. So whatever the carbons has been removed okay from glucose they will be removed as CO2 and rest of the carbons will be made a different pentose sugar that means 5 carbon sugar that is ribose and any pathway when you are discussing the location of the pathway inside the cell is important so cytosol is the main location for HMP shunt and almost all the cells it will be taking place so here I am mentioning what are all the organs this HMP shunt is taking place okay and what is the importance okay mainly this HMP shunt is another major pathway in case of RBC mainly red blood cells okay because it is producing NADPH at the same time NADPH and it is also oxidation of glucose without ATP production okay so what are all the organs or tissues uh, having this HMP shunt is like adrenal gland and this pathway mainly concerned for steroid synthesis and for testis also steroid synthesis ovaries also steroid synthesis liver for production of fatty acid, cholesterol and bile acid synthesis because this pathway is producing NADPH and this NADPH is required for fatty acid synthesis, cholesterol synthesis and bile acid synthesis and P450 and detoxification reactions they require NADPH and adipose tissue again fatty acid synthesis providing NADPH and mammary gland again fatty acid synthesis red blood cells maintenance of reduced glutathione okay this part you remember we will discuss in uh, later okay what is the importance of HMP shunt in RBC okay to maintain glutathione in reduced form okay why not oxidized glutathione why only reduced form uh, neutrophils in generation of superoxide ions for that also you require NADPH so all these pathways require NADPH okay the main significance of this is all these things they require NADPH and the source of NADPH in our body is HM patient remember this is one of the major viva question or in competitive exams they will ask so NADPH in our body produced from which metabolism or which metabolic pathway so that is HMP shunt or vice versa so pathway to when you are discussing in detail about the pathway pathway has been divided into two parts as like in glycolysis we said a phase one and phase two like preparative phase or like energy investment phase energy giving or energy gaining phase similarly HMP shunt is also of two phases it has been divided one is oxidative phase and non-oxidative phase in oxidative phase oxidation of glucose is take placing and in the non-oxidative phase there are some synthetic reactions to produce 5 carbon compounds such as pentoses so we'll see just outline of the uh, phosphate pentose pathway you see 
non oxidative phase and oxidative phase here non oxidative phase glucose 6 phosphate is converting to 6 phosphate gluconate and then to riblose 5 phosphate because we need aldehyde form not keto form okay riblose is keto form keto form of pentoses are not useful okay i'll tell you what is the importance of pentoses so that we'll discuss in significance and functionings of uh, hmp shunt so this riblose 5 phosphate again converted back to ribose okay ribose 5 phosphate ribose 5 phosphate in excess okay and this ribose phosph ribose 5 phosphate again converted back to glucose 6 phosphate some of the reactions by we using the enzyme transketolase okay this is overview oxidative phase you see oxidation of glucose from 6 carbon to 5 carbon there is a removal of carbon here and non oxidative phase the produced riblose converted to 5 carbon compounds in aldehyde form such as pentoses uh, aldehyde pentoses such as ribose so we'll see in detail about the phase 1 reactions first thing to start up with glucose 6 phosphate so we all know once the glucose entering inside the cell it will be phosphorylated so that is glucose 6 phosphate so remember when there is excess of glucose then only this hmp shunt is taking place and insulin is a strong supporter of hmp shunt okay glucose 6 phosphate with the help of glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase it converted into 6 phosphogluconolactone okay it converted to 6 phosphogluconolactone okay here nadp is converting into nadph plus h plus and this NADP is useful for fatty acid synthesis, cholesterol synthesis or bile acid synthesis, right? And here one water molecule has been involved and at the same time it requires activators like magnesium or calcium, okay? Glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase is required, magnesium or calcium. Now 6-phosphogluconolactone converted to 6-phosphogluconate by the enzyme lactonase. Here also again there is an involvement of water molecule, okay? Again activators like magnesium and calcium. And again, this 6 phosphogluconolactone is converted to ribulose 5 phosphate by the enzyme 6 phosphogluconotase dehydrogenase. Okay, and here one more NADP is converted to NADPH, and there is a sequential removal of carbon dioxide. You see here, that's why this is known as oxidation phase of HMP shunt. Okay, this is oxidative phase of HMP shunt where CO2 is removed. Okay, that means now 6 carbon glucose converted to 5 carbon ribulose 5 phosphate. So that's why phosphate group is stick to fifth carbon of ribulose now we'll see the non oxidative phase reactions in non oxidative phase reactions here they are categorized into two sides okay in one side what is happening so ribulose 5 phosphate whatever is there it will undergo isomerization reactions okay it to form xylose xylulose 5 phosphate and ribose 5 phosphate so here you take in count such as three molecules of glucose has been involved so that means three riblose 5 phosphates will be formed so three riblose 5 phosphate means two riblose 5 phosphates converted to one xylose 5 phosphate and one ribose 5 phosphate and one riblose 5 phosphate will be converted to again xylulose 5 phosphate and here that means five carbon five carbon five plus five and here this is five so total three glucose converted to three riblose so 15 carbons are there so 5 plus 5 xylulose 5 phosphate and ribose 5 phosphate combined to form glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and sedoheptulose 7 phosphate okay by the enzyme transketolase remember transketolase is the enzyme very very important and it require a coenzyme tpp tpp is a vitamin b complex related coenzyme that is b1 thymine okay thymine pyrophosphate without thymine py pyrophosphate transketolase reaction will not take place okay and there is no conversion of xylulose 5 phosphate and ribose 5 phosphate into glycerol 3 phosphate and sedohyplo 7 phosphate you see here glycerol 3 phosphate is a 3 carbon thing sedohyplo is a 7 you note down the calculation okay 5 plus 5 10 carbons right now glycerol is being split into 7 plus 3 3 carbon glycerol and 7 carbon sedohyplo 7 phosphate and now again one more enzyme transaldolase okay all the reactions are reversible okay and this transaldolase con converts glyceraldehyde and sedoheptolase ratio first it is 5 5 is to 5 now it is 3 is to 7 again this 3 is to 7 again converting into 6 carbon fructose 6 phosphate and 4 carbon erythrose 4 phosphate okay so now this fructose 6 phosphate and erythrose 4 phosphate again combined so 6 plus 4 that is 10 so to this what is happening one more initially we have come across with one ribulose 5 phosphate 
this riblose 5 phosphate converted to xylose 5 phosphate and in phase 2 this will be converted to fructose uh, 6 phosphate and uh, so how many carbons are there here fructose 6 phosphate okay it has been donated so two carbons has been donated so five carbons are there from five carbons this erythrose accepts two carbons from xylose 5 phosphate and convert it into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate so this erythrose accepts two carbons and forms 6 carbon fructose 6 phosphate and now anyhow this fructose 6 phosphate is converted to glucose 6 phosphate so here now we got this fructose 6 phosphate again converted to glucose 6 phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate will be producing half of the glucose 6 phosphate anyhow it will be converting into glucose 6 phosphate later on the reactions so the calculation is clear and once again i am telling first you are supposed to take three glucose units and these three the glucose units converted into three ribulose 5 phosphate so out of this two ribulose okay and one ribulose so these two ribulose 5 phosphate shared into division like one is xylulose 5 phosphate other is ribose 5 phosphate so again they combine to give two things here 5 is to 5 ratio so now they give 3 is to 7 glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and sedohepulose 7 phosphate so it is 10 carbons right so again they combine to give two things one is 6 carbon fructose 6 phosphate and 4 carbon erythrose uh, 4 phosphate so here one ribulose is having ribulose phosphate is having 5 carbons so here what is happening it is giving 2 carbons to erythrose phosphate okay and 3 carbons as glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and erythrose 4 phosphate taking 2 carbons it is having 4 carbons so it gives fructose 6 phosphate and here this fructose and this fructose both will form two form two units of glucose 6 phosphate okay this is clear so that's why hmp shunt is involving oxidation at the same time synthesis of five carbon compounds so the two in two enzymatic reactions are there transketolase okay so this transketolase dependent on a coenzyme known as tpp thymine pyrophosphate without this there is no conversion or there is no conversion or making of glucose 6 phosphate again in the form of non oxidative phase and what is happening if because of the deficiency high levels of ribose false phosphate will be accumulated and they start excreting in the urine it is causing pentosuria essential pentosuria remember essential pentosuria is a disorder okay where ribose 5 phosphate will be excreted in the urine because of the absence of the enzyme transketolase and because of the coenzyme deficiency tpp otherwise you can say b1 deficiency so significance we have already little bit uh, we have explained in case of characteristic explanation to the hmp shunt so the pentose phosphate is, that means the pentoses so we have seen nucleic acids dna and rna what is the full form of dna deoxyribonucleic acid rna is ribonucleic acid so dna is basically is made up of pentose sugar ribose dxc form of ribose and rna is a ribose sugar so that ribose that source is coming from hmp shunt okay in making of nucleotides and nucleic acids rna dna and it provides a route for interconversion of pentoses and hexoses so in your body when you are having pentoses how the pentoses are converting hexose at the same time how hexose are converting to pentose so what are all the things will be generated main thing is nadph for fatty acid synthesis cholesterol synthesis and bile acid synthesis okay and steroid hormone formation and neurotransmitter generation and detoxification reactions which are happening in the liver absolute requirement of nadph without nadph there is no chance of all these pathways to take place so i told you in the beginning in rbc what is the requirement of nadph production the shape of the rbc is spherical or biconcave shape and this shape is must for its functional activity because at the curves at the turns if the shape of rbc square or round it will not pass through so because of biconcave shape it can easily slip through the turns and bends and that shape is maintained by glutathione okay that cell membrane integrity has been maintained by uh, reduced form of glutathione again this reduced glutathione regenerated because of the nadph okay so when glutathione is continuously reacted with the hydrogen peroxide so it will be oxidized okay and this oxidized glutathione has to convert back to reduced glutathione that reduced glutathione is generated with the help of NADPH. So that is the importance of NADPH. 
NADPH also keeps iron of hemoglobin in reduced form that is ferrous form and it prevents the formation of methemoglobin. So these are the two advantages of HMB7 to take place in RBC. So you see here role of NADPH and glutathione. So oxygen it uh, forms superoxide or radicals here and hydrogen peroxide formation. So glutathione peroxidase will come to the action converts hydrogen peroxide into water molecule. So here the glutathione peroxidase what is happening? H2O2. So here it will donate its hydrogens and it forms water molecule. So after releasing two hydrogens it will form oxidized. So this oxidized form has to regenerate it by with the by donating hydrogens from NADPH again by the enzyme glutathione reductase. Okay and the source of glutathione uh, this NADPH is the pentose phosphate pathway. So this is a coexisting or symbiotic way of how uh, glutathione and NADPH work together in RBC. So coming to the regulation of pentose phosphate pathway, glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase is the rate limiting enzyme. Remember there is a connection this and von Wick's disease glycogen storage disorders. Okay. And the activity of enzyme is regulated by cellular concentration of NADPH. NADPH is a complete inhibitor of G6PD. When NADPH levels are high, so there is no need of production of and no need of continually uh, happening of hexose monos phosphate pathway. So this NADPH will go and inhibit like what to say the enzyme glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase to stop the reaction. So an increased concentration of NADPH is also decreased activity of G6PD. Example like under well fed condition the level of NADPH decreases and pentose phosphate pathway will be stimulated. And in starvation and in diabetes the level of NADPH is high so that it inhibits the pathway. So insulin enhances the pathway by inducing the enzyme glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase and 6 phospho gluconolactone dehydrogenase. So as I told it is a positive modulator for HMP shunt. And disorders of pentose phosphate pathway that is deficiency of glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase. Glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency is X linked inherited disorder characterized by hemolytic anemia. So, why hemolytic anemia? As I told you, when HMP shunt is not there, okay, iron is also not maintained in uh, ferrous form, okay, in reduced state, and glutathione is also not regenerated. So, there will be lysis of RBC, right? So, that is the reason behind hemolytic anemia. And most individuals in this case are asymptomatic. However, some individuals with glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogen deficiency develop hemolytic anemia if they are exposed to drugs like antibiotics, antibiotic and antimalarial, primaquine and chloroquine. Why? Because malaria especially, there is advantage having the glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogen deficiency. When uh, malaria parasite, because we all know, malaria parasite feeds on RBC. Okay. So in case of glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase, the RBC will be weak. So the lysis of RBC leads to hemolytic anemia. So in that condition, malaria parasite on which they will feed. So they don't have any feeding substance. So automatically mal malaria parasite will not survive. So the people who are having glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency, they are resistant to malaria. So Verne Korsakoff syndrome. So this point also you are note down because the non-oxidative phase of HMP shunt, we said transketolase enzyme dependent on a coenzyme that is TPP. So when there is deficiency of TPP, transcutaneous activities will not take place. In that condition, there is a res reduced definitive for TPP and it causes a disorder called Verne-Korsakoff syndrome. You can see this deficiency or disorder in chronic alcohols. Why? Because ethanol inhibits the absorption of TPP. So there is no availability of TPP for activity of transcutaneous. So in chronic time deficiency, the transcutaneous enzyme has a much reduced activity leading to Verne-Korsakoff syndrome. And the weak, uh, symptoms include weakness, mental disorders, loss of memory and partial paralysis. So these are all the things about HMP shunt. Thanks for watching. Thank you.